Good morning families! We are going to continue on from my last video where we talked about independent play for children and how that will lead off to what you guys were asking questions about which was meditations for your littles. So meditation for children will not necessarily look like meditation for you and that is something you have to keep in mind through this whole process is that your expectation of you sitting there with a calm, peaceful mind, clearing your thoughts, might not be exactly what your child is going to do with their meditation. And that's okay. People meditate in different ways and we need to respect that, especially with our children. So the first thing you're going to want to do is lead through example. You're going to want to start your own meditation practice at home. And having this practice and these rituals for yourself will show your child what meditation practice can look like. Next, what you're going to want to do is for your child, you're going to want to set the mood. So this might look like candles lit, music in the background, a comfy spot for them to sit. Um, I really enjoy in my classroom playing isochronic tones and binaural beats. I find that this helps children focus in on play and relax their anxieties a little bit in a subconscious way. This might be something you will want to look into in your home as well to explore the different types of isochronic tones and how that can affect your child in their sleep, meditation, and play. Um, another tip I have is use rituals with your child. So some daycares I know do a tea ritual where, you know, they come in from outdoor play, they brew some tea, and while they wait for the kettle to boil, they talk about their, you know, their gratitude of the day or what their goals are. You know, they steep the tea and they watch quietly as the tea kind of seeps into the hot water. Another thing that I've heard of from other centers is smudging. So if you have a smudge stick at home, um, they actually let the children like wave the smudge stick and clean, cleanse themselves in the air. This gives them that mindset of what of meditation and calming their bodies and minds. Both of those tips are a little bit out of the box. Uh, but you can think of things that work for you and your family. That might be helpful to share in the comments below. The next thing that you need to do is be consistent with your rituals and meditation. If you, you're not going to expect your child to be able to clear their mind and focus on their very first day of meditation. It's just not realistic. So you need to keep the same rituals and the same intentions every single day until it finally looks like how the, your child has envisioned it to look. Another thing you want to do is set a daily intention with your child. Maybe sit down while you're eating breakfast and say, what is your goals today? What are you happy about? What makes you calm? Or even while doing a tea ritual, like drink tea and say, I am happy, I am calm, I am peaceful. And say that with every sip. I know with my last class that I had, I used to do mindfulness lunches. So I would turn off all the lights and put on, I had battery operated candles, flameless candles, and some twinkle lights and I put on the isochronic and binaural music and I told them close your eyes and take a bite of your lunch. What does it taste like? What does it feel like? Is it crunchy? Is it soft? Is it squishy? And this is one thing I did one day that the classroom continually asked for every day. They would say I want the lunch music and they or they would close their eyes and take a bite of their lunch and they'd say look Miss Amber it's spicy today you know like it just got them in that mood of being mindful and aware of what aware of their senses and what they might be eating feeling thinking 
One thing that I also like to do as well, uh, before nap time, usually I would put uh, meditation stories. I have a Spotify account and I would just search meditation stories for children and I would just put on whatever I would find. This, some of the stories gets them to breathe with them as they are laying down in their cots that we have at the, at the schools and uh, it gets them to calm their body and mind while listening to a story which is somewhat entertaining. <laughs> I know a lot of teachers out there train in infant toddler massage. This might be another way to do some meditation with your child is you know put on a diffuser or whatever and do a little bit of relaxation massages or even like um, I know during nap time with toddlers they really love when you like brush like their third eye I do that a lot and they like really lay still calm and like sometimes fall asleep sometimes they don't and that's okay <laughs> but it's a nice way to get them to just not focus on thoughts or feelings and just focus on breathing in your hand so like getting them to breathe like I would just like deep breathe with them and be mindful as well um, I know that there's a lot of different breathing books that are available to children. Um, I know one book that I really like, um, I'm not sure what it's called, but if I remember, I'll link it down below, um, is like, it has a whale and it goes above the water and it breathes in, and then it goes down below and it breathes out and it really gets them into that breath work. Always talking about feelings of your child as they're experiencing different feelings will help later on during meditation to help describe what they're, what might be blocking them from clearing their mind and relaxing. So always having that conversations about thoughts and feelings with your child is very important also. Those are all the tips that I have come up with for meditation in all age groups. Um, I think well, especially for toddlers to school agers, you can really practice. Um, you can really practice yoga, and doing the cosmic yoga videos that I know are available on YouTube. They end up with, at the end, have like calming, savasana, like laying down meditation kind of things. So well, that can actually help with moving their body first and then calming their mind, uh, which is a really good tool to use as well. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me talk about meditation for young children. I hope this was helpful. If you have any more tips, please tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear all about them. And I can't wait to see you guys again and film a new video for you. <laughs> Bye littles!